If you want to make yourself a Greenland style kayak paddle, it's a pretty straightforward piece of woodworking. But how do you do that if you have no workshop, you've got limited space, and you're on a tight budget? My name's Chris Terrell, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I've solved these problems to make my own kayak and canoe paddles and other woodworking projects right here in my own kitchen. I'm going to start by talking very briefly about the paddle that I'm making at the moment, which I'm going to use as an illustration for this. Then I'll talk you through the tools and the kind of setup that I use to allow me to do this kind of project. Finally, I'll give you some suggestions and tips for what you can do if you either can't or if you don't want to have to buy the tools that you need. The tools I've used for this project are pretty simple. Good clamps, these F clamps are great. This is a block plane. It's a special plane for more for finishing wood and also for cutting across the end of the grain. The blade is at a shallower angle than in most other planes. A very useful tool for that finer shaping and for dealing with any difficult bits of grain, which in the case of my laminated scrap wood paddle is definitely going to be the case. Then a couple of spoke shaves. Now this one is a bit of a specialist one. It's got a curved sole to it for cutting into curves. I'll mainly be using uh, this kind of spoke shave for a lot of the rough shaping. It's a very useful kind of mini plane which you use both with both hands. You can push or pull with it. Very good for shaping, especially rounded or irregular objects. Then the, the main and biggest hand tool I'm going to use is a plane. This is a lovely old wooden bodied one which I like to use. It's one I was given and along with that I usually just have a, a, a mallet to hand to adjust the blade. So they're a bit more fiddly to use, but personally I like the feel of it for this. One of these kind of modern planes, steel body planes, is perfectly good and much easier to set up and use. The key thing with all the planes is to make sure that you keep the blades really sharp because it makes the planing much less effort and you'll get a much better result. I'm going to talk now about the setup that I use. Something I, I always try and put down on the floor when I'm doing this kind of work in the home is a, a, just a cheap tarp. It makes cleaning up a lot easier and quicker and uh, saves an awful lot of grief. I do use a small folding workbench. As you can see, they fold up really well. Um, there's lots of different makes. You can get hold of these quite cheaply. You may also be able to borrow one and that's something I'll talk about in a little while. I find this is, um, is good for most things, but the only problem is with a long piece of wood, if you're trying to do some planing, the whole thing moves around and it can also become a bit unstable. So for planing longer pieces of wood, then I needed a different solution. The solution I found for this was partly inspired by what I'd seen of some Japanese woodworkers. I managed to get hold of this solid beam. It's roughly four by four inches. As you could get away with a piece of two by four, um, which is roughly 100 millimeters by about 50. Slightly longer would be useful, about two meters. At the bottom, I've put a, a block in place as a stop to prevent the wood that I'm going to put on this from sliding off the end. And what I've done here is I've cut uh, I've just sawn and then chiseled an angled uh, rebate on each side here. That's to take the A-frame, which I made out of some additional scraps of timber. So the way the whole thing sets up, I just lower this into place. The A-frame sits on there, and most of the time this will sit reasonably stable. Now this is a very slippery floor. This was Originally I, I made this to use outside uh, in the garden where I can brace the bottom end against a wall. Indoors, if I put it against the wall, I'm too close to the plaster and also to the radiator. So what I do is I use an additional batten of wood, which I'm just going to butt against the wall. And then the bottom of this beam is going to butt up against this. So that will secure it nicely. And I, I've got plenty of room then to do the planing. Because it's a slippery floor and to prevent the A-frame from slipping out that way, I'm going to use this strap and hook the bottom of the loop goes underneath the little stopper block. And then the hook itself just hooks over the crossbar of the A-frame. And that just helps to stop the whole thing from opening out under pressure. Finally, what I'm going to do here is attach the paddle now to this. I could use one of the F-clamps, but the only problem now is that because the paddle is slightly rounded, 
a clamp can start to slip off with the vibration and the movement of the paddle. So I find a strap, at least one strap, is actually more useful. Okay, I'm just adding a second strap on here. And that holds it pretty secure. Now one thing I'm going to add down here is just a little block underneath that bit, underneath the end here, to hold the end of the paddle up about level with the finishing block. This is not a video about the detail of carving a Greenland paddle. I'm just using this as an illustration. And I'm going to put some links at the end of the video and in the description below for some tutorial videos that I strongly recommend um, if you want specifically to look at making a Greenland paddle. But what I hope this illustration has shown you is just how effective this very simple system can be, because I can plane very vigorously on a long piece of wood. If you can't buy these tools, or if you don't want to have to buy them, for example, you may not, this may be a one-off project that you're doing, then it's worth considering um, either hiring or looking for tool libraries, which are increasingly being started up in a number of places around the world. And similar to a lending library for books, you can just go along and you can borrow the tools that you need, including hand tools like these. Normally that doesn't cost you more than either a very small fee, a small subscription, or even just on donations, depending on the setup that they have. In one of the next videos, I'm going to show you the adaptations I make to the small folding workbench to make it easier to plane or do other quite physical jobs on it without chasing it around the room and without it falling over. But for now, if you found value in this video, please click the like button, pass it on to your friends, and I look forward to seeing you in some of the next videos. Thank you for watching.